Cool. Hey, everybody. Sorry for the slight delay. I was talking to uh, Justin, and then I've been waiting for a cleanup crew to get here uh, to get rid of all the trees and everything that are in my backyard um, after the ice storm. Oh, yeah, they're almost done. Okay, cool. And uh, they showed up like five minutes before we were going to start and I didn't know they were going to be here. I didn't know how long they were going to be here. So I had to go try and talk to them and there was a severe communication issue <laughs> in communicating my questions to them. So um, I think they're finished chopping everything up though. So there shouldn't be a chainsaw in the background. The only other threat we have over the next few minutes is if they drag a large tree over my internet line that has not been buried yet. But I, I definitely was able to point that out. Hey, watch out for this. <laughs> so... But hope you're all doing well. Um, we'll get started here in just a second. Let people roll in. I know there was people here uh, rocking and rolling ahead of time. So I want to make sure this isn't on here. Okay, cool. But I hope you're all doing all righty. Uh, over the weekend, uh, uh, I don't even know. Things, things have been things. It's been, uh, it's been wild around here just dealing with stuff and then um didn't really have anything over the weekend patreon wise it was sort of i because of uh thanksgiving i sort of have re reshaped um like my monthly schedule so we didn't do anything this weekend it'll be next weekend in the in the following one and then i sort of updated some info and we're getting ready to push all new our new classes and things out uh, and our new schedule out i was finishing up um, a smaller overdue commission from back when I used to take commission work. And um, it's almost done. But it's a ton of Reaper Wizards for uh, Wiz War, the game or something. I forget what exactly, but uh, should be cool. They're all, uh, it's like pairs of different colors of wizards, a bunch of older Reaper sculpts. Sandra gave, Ooh, of course, uh, dropping things before they're varnished. But um, old uh, Julie Guthrie sculpts bob rodolfi sculpts um i don't really think anything new is in here oh no i think this is a pathfinder this is a pathfinder mini so this one's relatively new um but you can see we used some clear magenta and some phthalo green some stuff like that making sure everything looks uh nice and cool but beyond that that's it i worked on um the new shelves that are behind me i haven't turned off um but i put a bunch of lights in there and um that's it it's just been a bunch of housekeeping so but we can go ahead and get started today. Hopefully, uh, relatively soon this week, um, the painting for the paint set for next year's Miniature Monday stuff uh, will be done. So they'll be able to get the, like, whatever, the package graphics put together relatively soon. So excited about that. And that's pretty much it. So we'll go ahead and get started. We're just going to start off immediately with Hone Steel. Oh my gosh, and I just... <laughs> okay, look at this. That's what happens when you're a cap tapper. You see all the hone steel that just hit the wet palette sponge? Now it's full of metallic paint. Oh boy, so I just gotta remember that to prevent some, some issues in the future here. Did not mean to do that. But hey everybody in the chat, Good to see you as always. Next time around, we will paint uh, the IMF Bulldog. So that big, big robot. We'll be taking care of that guy. This time around, we have our Cyber Troll. I'm surprised he didn't come with a keyboard. I feel like that would make it so much funnier. If he had like a keyboard strapped to his back. Or maybe if you had a Gatling gun that shot keys from a keyboard. I feel like that could be also entertaining. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint up um, almost, so pretty much the entire front section of all the multi-barrels. And then uh, we'll do this little box here towards the back. And then we'll be painting up uh, different parts of it in that metallic blue. This guy's friends with the uh, mini we painted last week so we want them to kind of go together um the way that we split the 
theme, I suppose, on this was just by splitting uh, which which colors were sort of more prominent on uh, each pair, I guess. So, you know, like the good guys, bad guys. I'm assuming this guy's a bad guy. And then, obviously, our Illyrian Scout, I believe, is uh, the mini. But the one-eyed alien with the binoculars, he's like the good guy. And then the big robot is his buddy as well. Now then I'm looking to see what else we had. Ah, yes, so he has a pistol or something here that you can see. Hey, Sharky. Thanks for that sub. Remember to double check your subs if you do uh, Amazon Prime. Because it does not renew it for you. I mean, you've heard me say it a billion times before. And you can just sub in general. and We, we appreciate you. That's funny. 10, 20, 20 months already. That is close to 10 years of regular time. So I'm going to take our sparkling blue. Get that ready. And I need my pokey tool. Now I just opened a brand new pokey tool. So I like how I do that to myself all the time. I know where my other one is. It's not in this room. Funny enough. All right, we're going to grab some of the nice sparkly blue here. All right, so for this, I'm just going to put it on the weapon. So everywhere else on the weapon, we're going to out, uh, outline. We're going to base coat. Relatively simple. I don't remember if we had done, what, uh, let me double check our days here. When was the, okay, yeah, so last Monday we were still doing the painting contest. So, uh, you know, we did have a winner for that and I shipped that out. All that stuff went out in the mail to our winner. So thanks to everybody that went and voted. We had a lot of really fun entries. Now then, I still have a ton of extra paint, so there's there's probably going to be another help me clear my my paint giveaway at some point. But for now, I'm pretty much good. Yep, sounds like they're done. Slamming the gate shut. Let me go ahead and take this. Now I painted this. We, we may do freehand on this, we may not. We'll just kind of see where we're feeling on the smaller little upper tank there. Lock down that no sharing your own picture rule. Yeah, I mean, I assumed everybody knew that that wasn't cool, right? And then like the person that did it sort of tried to blame me by saying like, well, you didn't like lock that, but there's no way to do that on a Facebook page. You see what I'm saying? So it was like, I, I don't know. Because, yeah, literally every other person <clears throat> that was sharing the stuff was like, you know, hey, this is anonymous because he didn't include our names. But, you know, there is there's there's a reason why most businesses you go into uh, have hand washing notices posted after you go to the bathroom, because sometimes people need to be told to wash your hands after you go to the bathroom, you know, but. But definitely, uh, you know, the, the person the person in question, um, without a doubt, understands, uh, you know, that wasn't cool. But it but, you know, it at the end of the day it was my fault and that a lot of people are pissed off, but I'll take the blame for that for that. So they, they don't they they feel, uh, you know, I don't know the right way to put it, but they understand uh, that. It was kind of like a lucky thing that it happened. So, <clears throat> all right. So then, other than the big old Gatling gun, that was really the only thing that we were painting up with the metallic sparkly blue here. Which honestly is funny because it like um, it 
kind of has a toyish feel to it now. But. Well, I'm glad you're not mad, Joni. I definitely got some nasty, nasty messages. But to be fair, from people that I've never t spoken with before, that have never interacted with anything before, right? So don't really feel bad about that, right? Like there are always people that show up when there's a giveaway that, that suddenly are flooding my inbox with questions that they could easily answer if they just like read the original posts. But, you know, that's how that goes. That's why I don't do giveaways, really. Like if I do a giveaway, it's usually, you know, access to Patreon or something like that because it's, you know, you, you never get, like all you're doing is just creating an environment for people to expect free stuff out of you. Like that was one of the things that I didn't like about the Twitch community back in the day was that like you couldn't really get a big Twitch following unless you are, I mean, it's still true to this day, to be honest. Like if you look at all of the most successful Twitch streamers, they are constantly doing giveaways, sub giveaways, free giveaways, like whatever, um, monthly giveaways, the weekly giveaways, holiday giveaway. Like it's, that's just the name of the game. You know what I mean? And so for me, it's always just kind of been like, I don't like doing that uh, just because I don't want people to expect anything out of me. So other than terrible jokes and mediocre paint jobs. But all right. So now we're going to grab, let's see what else we can base coat because we're going to do overall washes over, over this stuff. So let's grab intense brown and we're going to use that uh, for some pantalones here. Like, you know what would be funny, actually? It would be to see, like, if I did a painting contest that was themed and whatever, that just had no no prize, right? Like, no prize. Just see if you win, right? I mean, I don't know. Like, that. I feel like that would be the biggest test of if people are doing it just because they enjoy it or if people are doing it just for things, right? Like, would people even think to enter a contest that didn't have a prize other than you winning? You know, I mean, painting contest, you don't have a prize, uh, typically at, um, conventions. I mean, yes, you get like a medal if you place, but they're not like giving you free stuff, which is interesting that that's the expectation, I guess, online. I don't know. All right. So I'm just going to do all the pants. Now he does, ah, that's what I did. So I did like the denim color on the back. So we'll do his little chaps here. I'm, I mean, that's what these are, right? So we got these. I am excited though. I have a really uh, ridiculous uh, amount of plinths headed my way from Jacob Jansen. Which I am excited about. They're all uh, like custom. Um, none, of, none of the ones with acrylic that you guys have seen before, right? So like this style. That, that have like the cool acrylic stuff in them. These are just like raw burl plinths that I'm gonna be using to do pretty much all display minis. Uh, that's kind of what I'm looking forward to doing actually, uh, mostly here uh, for the rest of the year into next year is nothing but just kind of diorama-ish style stuff. All right, so now we're gonna hop up to the belt and the bags. Now we're going to use intense brown for all of this, but we're going to highlight it up um, in different colors to separate the materials. So we're just we're just thinking in the um, sort of sort of easiest painterly mindset here. So I'm going to paint this up to where we have the secondary strap. I'm excited to start our atelier. Uh, Patreon project, but uh, it still hasn't shipped. So <laughs> it's going to literally be like three weeks for us to wait for this miniature. It's kind of annoying, but it is what it is when you uh, are waiting on 3D print people. But last week we did a digital rendering of it. So we took the black and white render of the miniature into Photoshop and, and pretty much painted the entire thing. And then our job 
over the course of however many weeks it takes us will be to replicate the plan that we set out for ourselves. So I know I'm excited about that. A lot of people really like the way that it looks and we're excited to begin when, whenever we're able to. I am going to go ahead and do our gloves here. Boom. And let's see, yeah, my gloves here too. Did I forget to do the knuckle portion on that? But yeah, that's all right. That's okay, we still have silver out there, so I can touch that up. And then I did that dark, all right, cool. Easy enough. So I know I've, I've had a lot of people asking, uh, I, I don't know, I've actually had a bunch of like all over the board questions. I'm going to grab Ashen Blue and I'm also going to put some Noir Black on the palette right now. Um, I've had a lot of all over the board questions from people for the next uh, sort of iteration of Miniature Monday. Um, so a lot of people have been asking like, and I think it's really just because of the different questions that we kind of posed um, beforehand. So, you know, is it going to be one one miniature per session still? Like, what's the skill range? What's whatever? So it's just been a, a wide array. So I don't know really, I don't remember exactly, to be fair, um, what we covered uh, when we sort of went over all of the info. But, um, you know what, I'm also going to get some white on the palette here. And that'll give us everything else we need other than the skin. But so, um, just to sort of go over all those details more concisely, now that I know kind of what people were still wondering. So yes, um, anytime we work on a miniature, at least the way that it's planned for now, um, it'll be what we always do, right? So start to finish. Um, and I, I would expect them to take up more of the time slot in general um, than some of the others, right? Because like now in some of these kits, We'll have stuff done relatively quickly, depending on the subject matter, right? For some of the miniature, look at this, another Necron head. I just can't get rid of all these Necrons that are all over my, my table. Um, but so generally we have some that, that happen relatively quickly. And then others out of a set that'll, that'll take a little bit longer. Um, for these, I would just imagine overall, most of them will take a little bit longer just because I'm trying to do some cooler stuff uh, with them all, but it should still be start to finish um, as we do. And then um, there is no overarching theme necessarily uh, for like a, a month's worth of content, right? Like really the way you should think about it is um, yes, the stuff comes like we will be releasing the information month. Actually, I don't know. I, don't, I mean, we'll have a schedule that'll, that'll tell you when we're painting everything. Um, but it won't be like released monthly because the paint set is really the only thing that's getting released, if that makes sense. Um, so you'll, you'll, you'll know when everything's happening. Uh, and th that's why there's no real like theme. It's just kind of like this week we're, we're focusing on, let's say doing a flaming sword. This week we're focusing on painting uh, like a throne on a miniature, like whatever it is, right? We have some big minis. Um, just different different subject matters we haven't really messed with yet. And so really it's a, a week to week thing rather than a uh, month month to month thing. And then in terms of difficulty, um, you know, I, I would expect to try and push yourself uh, further than you know your typical uh, like if we compare it to the very first thing we painted, right like the warg, um, that was a good introduction just to get people familiar uh, with the style of painting that I do, right? Um, but we haven't really, other than a few, had something sort of that basic. So I would just imagine sort of, you know, nothing radically different, but definitely not like super easy paint jobs since I want it to be a lot, a lot different, if that makes sense than what we were doing previously. So, um, but I think that's kind of a better clarification based on some of the emails and messages that I got with people wondering. Um, and then people still keep asking, right? Like you, you know, <laughs> like, yes. I obviously know all the miniatures that we'll be painting and I obviously have the paints here in front of me, but I'm waiting until Reaper is going to release any of that information, right? I'm not going to just let people know stuff ahead of time. 
um, in case something does change last second and, uh, you know, then any information I may have given somebody is now incorrect, right? So that's why I'm just not going to really put anything out there until I know it's all good. So, um, but what I did, I've been using um, a little bit of the ash and blue mixed in with the white and a little bit of noir black just to make a nice middle of the road gray. And all of these will be washed down to appear black. And we'll just highlight it up with some gray by the time we're done. And then we'll go ahead and do the straps here from his little, I don't even know, it's a vest. Is it a, like a halter top? I don't know the right word to describe what he's wearing, but it's definitely a choice. And so we'll go ahead and do that part too. Then in the front here, same idea. Can't really see it right there, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. And then we'll do this strap that comes out of nowhere across his chest. Only reason I say it comes out of nowhere is uh, it doesn't connect to the back of the miniature anywhere. So, oh, look at that. Look, why, why did I skip that entire area? Help someone over the phone. Well, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Did not, uh, when Justin and I were, were chatting before we got started, we had plenty to talk about. But uh, I, too, have recently had a situation where I'm explaining something to someone multiple times every way I possibly can, and none of it connected. I mean, oh, boy. Very rarely does that ever happen in my life where, like, I just can't communicate to someone. And when it does, I'm like how is this possible right like what have i what is what has magically changed here to where i can't do this but okay so i'm going to take ash and blue on its own and oops i think i just mixed in the tiniest amount of the of the shiny blue it's okay it's all right <coughs> we'll go ahead and get the butt here cyber troll fanny And then the shirt. And this is a good, once you wash it down, this is a good uh, denim -y color. And then as with what we normally do, right, we'll wash all this down, work it up, and then knock out the skin. Skin, face, and horns. You know what I always found funny about this sculpt, too, is that the face seems so much, like, the there's something sort of, uh, like, illustrative about the relationship and size and the proportion between the horns and the face, I think, compared to the rest of the body. Like the face makes sense compared to the rest of the, the scale of the body, but then the horns seem larger with their placement. But then if you compare then the horns to the rest of the body, it makes sense, but not to the face. Like it's it's funny how the, the two objects really sort of have this size difference. But based on how I painted the first one, I think I kind of know how I can make it less cone heady or not cone heady. I don't know. But we're going to essentially paint in some hair that isn't sculpted, and I think that'll help kind of bring the scale together on everything all right so we're just waiting on that denim to dry so i'll go ahead and pre-mix our wash here out on the palette so I'll get a new new area on palette land here and there we go I did also have some people ask uh, when I might be doing more just random stuff for sale on the website because I've been selling miniatures for like dirt cheap painted that are from old Miniature Monday sets and then other stuff I have around the house. Relatively soon, I don't really have stuff painted now laying around. So, um, but I do have some plans for that. I know a long time ago people, when I did that one auction that was, uh, it had the painting altar that I made for like your paintbrush to sit on. A lot of people like really wanted that and I have 
materials to make five unique ones. So I know, um, I mean, I could sit down and probably get that done over a weekend if I dedicated some time to it. So I just have some fun ideas, right? And like none of these things that I plan on making are going to be what I would charge, right, for like commissions or anything for one-off pieces. So they all should be affordable for everybody, um, which I've been enjoying, right? Because you know, I always look at selling painted stuff that I've used for a different purpose. If it's from a private lesson, um, Patreon miniatures, uh, miniature Monday miniatures, right? If it's something that I already was able to purpose for some reason or the other, I, I never really consider it as anything other than like, you know, giving people a chance to own just extra stuff for fun, right? And I know that that's kind of what everybody has been grabbing all those painted miniature encounters up for. All right, so I'm going to take our wash. We're going to start applying it here onto the gun first. Pretty much everything other than the colors we just painted should be safe. Now that's a little bit thin. I'm going to add a little bit more of the Noir Black. There we go. Make sure we're good to go. Now what I do like about the metallic blue too is kind of how the color shift, now this is true for pretty much all colored metallic paints from Reaper. The metallic shift in it is so different once you apply washes because it it's kind of like the color pigment rather than the metal flake tones down more. So you get like a very cool effect. Now I don't know if, you know, if you're highlighting up in sort of a true metallic metal style from that point, I don't know how that would necessarily affect things overall. Um, I haven't had a reason to experiment with that. But I know that it could be a cool interaction. So if you have something you've been waiting to paint up that's colorful and metallic, uh, I would be interested to see what you could do with that just because of how the, the paints interact. At least in the way that I paint. But... So just dirtying up all of our mini here. Now, of course, if you're somebody that has like strong tone wash, um, Agrax Earthshade, Nuln Oil, whatever, anytime we're doing an all over wash like this that isn't dependent upon the color beneath it, right? So obviously I'm not, <clears throat> I'm not pairing a darker brown to go on the browns or a darker whatever, like, you know, different washes per base color beneath, um, you can always just do a one over color if you want. Now, I, I'm always a fan of trying to do it yourself. Obviously, if we were painting, you know, some huge, massive army of minis that all needed to look the same, yada, 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 for consistency's sake, then I would uh, use a pre-made product to do my washing. Um, but otherwise, I think it's always a good exercise, right? The more brush control you have with really wet paint, obviously helps you in the long run. I didn't wash that section right there just because uh, it's so dark. Big old raid time. Thank you for the raid. I hope you guys are all doing well. What were you working on today? I saw... I forgot. I didn't click on it, but I, I saw you live. Really, Mondays are me trying to run onto here and then as I'm clicking to get our chat open while I'm talking to Justin is when I kind of see what everybody else is working on, so. But. Okay. So, we're just going to let all this dry before we start piecing it back out. With all of our fun stuff. All of the lovely alpacas. Okay, now then, uh, we could start this scheme. We could, but I'm just, I'm looking to see if, if we'd run any, any problems. We really won't. Okay, so what I want to do, we already have um, some intense brown on here. I like gnome flesh because it's, it's very, very warm. It's a little bit darker 
than uh, the tan skin, which is like usually my go-to um, skin tone. That would also be right, like uh, what I would want to use in general if I was just sort of basing from anything. That's my go-to color. But I want to mix this in with probably 50-50 with intense brown. Look at that. There was even a, a smidge. There was an afterthought of noir black. Now then, my Zenithal application here today was weird because my Vex has been clogging really bad for like the last few days and I just need to like have a, a come to Jesus meeting with it to get it finally cleared out and cleaned. But so since I was rushing, my Zenithal is not as, as good as it normally is. So I'm just going to base coat it how I would base coat anything else and then we'll just wash it down and highlight it up. But I want to start a little bit darker than what I would consider to be like our, our base tone, which would be the known flesh. And this will be a couple of coats just to make sure I've got it the way that I would like it. And I am ignoring the uh, horns and everything else like that for now. All right, so we're gonna let all this stuff set up before we go back for a second coat. We're at that transitional stage where everything is wet. You know, it's funny, whenever you're working on a miniature relatively quickly, so there's always this moment where like, you can only do so much at once because you're just waiting for stages, right? So it's like, okay, I've applied a wash all over these colors, now I need to do this one. Well, that one's drying, this is all still drying. It's interesting. Usually when you're working on something slower, it's section by section, so you always have the ability to jump around to something else. But when you're when you're taking a hammer to your miniatures, you know. Alright, so just waiting on that. I'll be interested to see what people kind of do with this. I saw somebody convert this miniature too by chopping the head off, and then they put um the, I think they did like the lid to some kind of like spray bottle. So like this is an air, uh, I don't know. So the lid that would go on top of this, but like really small and they put it where the head went and then painted it like it was just like a weird uh, space helmet, I guess. And that looked really, really cool. And then I saw somebody, maybe it's the same person. They took that head and put it on something else. I'm not sure. But I feel like a lot of the sci-fi minis don't get as much conversion work, right, as some of, like, the regular Bones minis, things like that. Now, to be fair, the Bones Black miniatures are a little bit more difficult, right, to um, just kind of hack away at because the material is more like your standard uh, hips, right, like uh, GW minis, things like that. Um, but you can still get a lot of work done, so... All right, cool. So the skin tone is drying pretty much like how I was expecting it to. I will grab my temperamental airbrush here. Come on. I don't want to hit any raw air out of here. There we go. Good old, good old Vex. This is, to be honest, this is my, uh, this is Vex number three <laughs> that I've, I've been using. But only because I knew that this one wasn't clogged, so that's why I used it today. And by clogged, I just mean the nozzle. So, you know, what I do whenever that's happened, usually it's because one... So what's funny is, like, <clears throat> my airbrush is never clogged because I don't clean them after I use them. My airbrush is clogged because I forget to close the cap on a uh, Steinal Res primer. And so then little, little gunky bits inside the Steinal Res, like the, the walls of the bottle, will begin to dry. And um, that then, when I shake the bottle, the second time I use it, will create, like, little milk skin, you know, dried bits that then go into the, the nib and immediately, or, you know, the nozzle and immediately clog your airbrush. So, for me, I'll be like, 
cool, look, the airbrush is working. I spray some water through it. And then the second I put primer in it, it's like, work, work, we're done. And I'm like, oh my God. So, but yeah, I had to prime. I was working on, we're still doing a bunch of Necrons. The one that I just showed was from my army I worked on like a year, two years ago, maybe. Um, but uh, I'm, it, I'm working my way through the Indominus box. And uh, I had to prime stuff for a lesson. And it literally took me like 40 minutes to get the the clog out of the nozzle out of the deep cut uh, Vex that I've been using. <laughs> but mostly because one of those, you know, bits of primer will get lodged in there. And then the only way I can get it out, obviously, you know, you take your needle <clears throat> and you put it through. That's the one thing, too, about the Vex. I, I can't really use the regular like metal needle that you would use on an awada or or something like that that kind of goes through and and scrapes the insides out right um so i end up using the needle and i have to let it soak in something long enough right so airbrush cleaner whatever so that way you can get it out but you know when you're in a pinch like i was and it happened immediately it's like well all right we're gonna toss this to the side bust open another vex Or uh, you could just be like I am with my other airbrushes and just have extra nozzles ready at all times to swap out. But I think, I, I don't know if anybody's asked Ron again, but I know I asked him like when we can expect, um, and Justin's doing stuff, so I don't know if he's listening uh, or if he knows. I don't think he would know. I don't know, maybe. But Ron had, had given a November at some point timeline to have the extra pieces for sale on the website. So maybe sometime this month. But I know that was something people were itching for, were extra, extra needles, nozzles, you name it. Now, the needles, I think, will be a little bit harder to mess up, obviously, than the nozzles. But I always like to have extra pieces on hand just in case, you know, especially since I can't, uh, I can't just go to Hobby Lobby, right, like I can for a wad of parts to get my replacement needle if I need it in a, in a pinch. But then again, I'm also not, I'm not painting huge armies on deadlines and stuff like that like I used to, so not as in an imminent rush as I used to be all the time for all of my painting, which is nice. Don't recommend. I remember one time I was finishing up a commission, <clears throat> it was like a $4,000 huge, huge commission, and I desperately needed, since I always do, um... I always do like 50% up front, right? 50% when it's completed. And it was like right at the end of a month. And I for sure needed the money, right? To pay my bills and everything like that. And I knew when I was going to be getting um, complete or complete. I knew when I was going to be getting finished uh, with that commission in general. And so I was doing like airbrush effects from below. And then I needed to varnish everything. So like everything was sort of at like an almost finished stage. And uh, I had been up for like 24 hours from a Wednesday because everything needed to get in the mail uh, Thursday morning in order to get there by Saturday for the client. And I remember I, I was finishing up and I was like, all right, I'm going to make another cup of coffee because it was like 6 a.m. I had been up for like 26 hours or something at that point. And I was like, all right, I'm going to make coffee. It's all good. I stand up and like I use one of the little table holsters for the airbrush. And so as I stood up, I turned the hose got caught on the, the armrest on my chair, pulled it out of the holster and it landed boom and bent the needle right at the end of the airbrush. And so I had to wait like a nerve wracking three hours to run to Hobby Lobby to buy a new uh, needle to set as fast as I, you know, possibly could. But those situations are not good for your health. So luckily I'm not in those situations as often anymore. So now I'm going to make a wash out of intense brown and we're just going to do this over the different parts of the arms, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, man, good old, good old commission nightmares. <clears throat> or, man, there have been some situations too, like when a client's gotten the date wrong of an event or, or something you're trying to get work done for, and uh, they hit you up and they're like, hey, I need this in a day, not a week. And you're like, 
uh, I can't help you. Even though I was so stupid and naive at the time that I was like, yeah, I'll just stay up all night, guys. It's all good. I'll get it done. And not charge extra money. What an idiot, dude. I, was, I got taken advantage of so much. But that's how it goes. <clears throat> What's funny is like, if you're really commission painting for a living, which very few people do, obviously, because it's nearly impossible. Um, like, what you're willing to put up with and the, the dumb decisions you make go up increasingly and your prices go down because you realize you have to constantly keep getting bookings and deposits and stuff. And um, what was funny was, like, you know, the less work you start doing and, and the higher your prices get, the more infrequent it goes. So, like, that last crunch time towards the end of a commission so you can get the rest of the uh, the money is always so funny compared to when like you know it's just like a side hobby it's if it's just like your way to pay for your own hobby stuff your own games that you play whatever then it's way different than you know like oh god i have to go to the doctor i gotta do whatever and so now you've got to like rush to try and finish a commission to get the rest of the cash it's very nerve-wracking or, right, like, you need the money really bad, and then a client comes back over and over with changes, and you're like, I've just spent 12 hours on changes that I should have charged you for, but you just need the money, so you don't say anything. That's always really cool. But these are all hard lessons you learn, and you move on from. Especially talking with people like uh, Kathy Waffle, and the great Wapelius, right, like, Anytime I've had a crazy situation, they'll always chime in and be like, yep, we've, we've learned that lesson the hard way before. All right, so pretty much everything on the rest of the body is dry. The skin is now like at a place where we can highlight it up all the way. The horns, <coughs> let's go ahead and just do the horns like, I'm just going to take white and uh, mix it in. I'm gonna add a little bit of our blue here too. So it's a very sort of off palette, like flesh tone here. There we go. And I'm just gonna paint it on. Now, if you at home just have like a bone color or an ivory color, feel free to just do that. If you wanna just have a direct easy peasy color. But I used a little bit of the ashen blue, gnome flesh and some of our white. And that's what's given us that nice color there. It's so funny to think about too, like the dis the difference in the amount of volume I've put out over a year. Now, obviously, uh, what's funny is some people have painted more this year than they ever have, right? Due to the pandemic. Um, but yeah, I know in so from twenty eighteen to twenty nineteen, uh, I had over a hundred clients. I think I had like a hundred and twelve clients. And I painted somewhere in the neighborhood of like 2,800 miniatures. And then 2019 is when I made like all of my changes um, to booking and pricing and all of that. And then I, I think I only had maybe like 100 clients. And, uh, or no, 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 sorry. Um, I think it was like 40. And then I only painted maybe like 800 miniatures. So it was a lot better. And then this year, it's been like, I don't even know, maybe 40 miniatures total for people, right? Way, way, way different. So, and my health is so much better, so much better, but all right. So we got that base coated. I would base coat the hair right now, but that's still wet. So I'm not too interested in that. So what we'll do, we'll start working on highlighting our pantalones. So I've got our intense brown. Now, actually, let me go ahead and grab the faded khaki. We'll go ahead and use faded khaki as our brighter highlight color. There we go. I'll change our palette view. Go back to the intense brown. Cap tapping all around. Okay. Zoom in. For those of you that have been able to do a ton of your painting this year, more so than not, or less, right? Like, what, what is your, now that we're getting to the end of the best year of all time ever in our lifetimes, obviously, it's been so cool. 
what has your painting been looking like? Like, have you guys painted a normal amount or have what you've been painting changed? Have you like changed your, your quality? Have you, have you gotten better this year because you feel like you're painting more or you feel like you've taken time off? What do you think? Because I know when, you know, all the lockdown, locked, <laughs> lockdowns, when the lockdown started and stuff, right, sort of, what, March to April and May, sort of that area, people were looking for stuff to do, but I feel like everybody gets bored of something eventually, so maybe, maybe not. I know a lot of people uh, <laughs> that had game nights and stuff with board games and even game stores, right, like that kind of definitely stopped. Um earlier on so i mean people were probably painting up their backlogs if i had to guess right i'm i'm assuming most people just kept buying stuff <laughs> being like hey when this is over i'll have all these new things to put to uh paint and play with i know that was that ended up being my pandemic therapy right it would be like what's this new thing that i want that i can work on later up underneath the knee here in the edge of that chap to work our way down now the bottom of these pants I'm going to make sure are much more weathered won't be highlighted up as much as the rest of the mini I know if you ask Byron how much he's been painting this year, he would say, I've caught up on every miniature Monday kit. That seems to be his superpower. Okay, we got those rebased. Let's do the wrists here and our hands. Easy enough. Oh, right, this was supposed to be our silver. I'll just rewash that when the time comes. Okay. Now, again, smaller objects, I don't really care about highlighting up as much in this stage, right? Just because we don't have enough real estate to do further work on something I'm going to cover up again. So really, I'm just trying to make sure I've recompartmentalized these different sections with color. And we can move on. All right, so I'm going to grab some of our faded khaki, really just a brush tip full, mixing this in. And this is good, right, because it'll be a separate color outside of our skin tone, right? Because the skin tone, obviously, we're using um, the intense brown as a wash that we use to base coat all of these colors. However, by using the faded khaki, which is more of a yellow ochre color, right that will push it all in a different direction and it won't look so same same right it'll it'll help it look a little bit uh, more varied but so as we begin highlighting these sections up i'm just going to be pushing the paint up towards the top these different areas doing implied texture things like that i do want this to be <clears throat> not necessarily like hard leather right but i'm assuming this is some kind of worn leather outfit work outfit whatever he's wearing some kind of armor now you could do it all black as well. If you're gonna, <clears throat> if for whatever reason you're somebody that's gonna have two of these, you could do the other bodysuit in black. It'd probably work out just fine for you. Now was that supposed to be, okay.
So many cyber trolls, so little time. I guess you could do a weapon swap somehow. If you're going to have a couple of them. This color, not as much of a large difference, right, from the color beneath, but we just need to set it up <clears throat> for our, our brighter color transition. What else is in the group with him? Uh, you can look at the Reaper website to see a kit. I don't have them all in front of me. Um, but last week we did, uh, like, alien dude with a gun. And then we have another alien dude with a gun, one of the Illyrian scouts, one of the one-eyed weird alien monsters who they have, like, one eye on a stock and then, like, a mouth in their chest, and they're pretty interesting. And then we have the IMF bulldog, which is a big, big old robot. But this guy corresponds to the alien that we painted last week. So they both are kind of in the same color scheme. Oop. All right, so now I'm going to take a, another brush bowl and mix it in. <laughs> nice try, Sharky. Sharky tried to help. And the chat said, no, you're not allowed to post links, no. I want this to be a little bit brighter. There we go. Okay. So now I'm going to be outlining and paying more attention, right, to where I'm applying this highlight color. Are there any good three packs or more of miniatures out recently from Reaper? Uh, do you mean like, I'm assuming you mean like a group of miniatures? Um, not that I know of. So the easy, easy way to kind of know, right, if there's going to be a release of multiple miniatures would be to look at the previous Kickstarter, right? Um, the only group of three or more that were in the last one would have been like the aliens, the penguins, the pugs, um, the zombies that came out in Bones Black recently, uh, or, or not zombies, the bog skeletons, I believe. Um, but I think that's it. I'm not sure. A lot of the new stuff um, are like two packs, like it'll be two miniatures in a set if I'm I, I don't think I'm mistaken I actually do think most of the multi-releases this this year have been double ups uh the men at arms also or the city guard I don't know the the three three dudes they have shields pole arms whatever the shields have skulls on them that's a three pack of minis I, I remember on the Facebook group somebody was like Reaper should release the following and it was like groups of 16 it was like so strange i was like what why would this be the why would why would you need 16 beholders or like you know i just thought that was such an interesting number because even in even in D, &D situations right because that's what i always try like if i see a, a, a suggestion like that or a release like that i'm like all right so you know you're gonna yeah, it makes sense if you have 10 goblins or, like, you've got, you know, whatever. Because I always think of it in role-playing encounter scenarios. But that many at a time, I was like, huh. That's... I'd hate to be your group. That's a lot of a lot of dice rolling and, and math. But yeah, I mean, they could potentially try and... Well, so the difference, right, is, like... Obviously, the best value... 
uh, mini for mini. Uh, if you're buying multiple miniatures at once out of Reaper, would be the um, Warlord Army packs, but they're metal. So you're, you know, you're getting anywhere from seven, <clears throat> I think like seven to nine miniatures for about 40 bucks. Which isn't too bad. And then if they were to convert those into Bones Black, obviously it would have to be like a Kickstarter scenario because they'd have to retool um, all of the molds, right? That's very, very expensive. But that would be killer if they did that at some point just because that would just be awesome encounter ability immediately just to buy those packs. But again, the upfront cost is really the uh, difficult portion there. So again, just highlighting and outlining all these different sections with this color, we're almost to that final leather highlight, and that'll be directly our faded khaki. It'll look really nice. <clears throat> but I'm just making sure I've got this to a level to where it'll make sense with our final highlight, and I think we're there. Going back underneath the knee here. <clears throat> wanted to do a paint along with two others with similar dudes well you can just buy anything right i mean that seems like the answer you can just buy anything and then just paint them together right all right so we're moving our way down Because, yeah, if you're looking for, like, miniatures that are a similar theme, you know, that is one thing that's nice about the Reaper website is, is as long as it's more than a three-letter word, uh, you can, you can you know, they have a, a really good handle on the keyword searching on the website for the most part. Because I know for a while, actually, I think they fixed the three-letter issue. Because, yeah, I remember they discovered, like, if you search a three-letter word, like, the keyword wouldn't pop up. So, like, if you searched axe, uh, hat, different things like that, like, was there was a bug. But I'm pretty sure they fixed it now. That was a, that was a while ago. I remember hearing I think I was still in Texas when that was going on. But otherwise, they tag away. Which, too, a lot of people overlook that, right? Like, I remember when they changed the website, people had a lot of complaints for things that got shifted around or disappeared, right? But for the most part, it's very hard uh, to find a... I mean, obviously, they're the manufacturer of the miniatures themselves. The manufacturer? The manufacturer of the minis. But, like, very rarely do you find online websites that are, like, you can search an entire catalog of miniatures based on what they're holding or what they're, they're, they're wearing. So... But and the tip of the shoe. Okay. This leg I don't really care about because it's underneath the shadow. So let's do our hand here. Out. Brigand. Are bones black better quality than what? Than older bones black? Because it's the same. Same material. And then I think the material they've been, like the little tester silhouette, I think that's new bonesium. I don't think that's bones black or anything. I think that's just... New bones, zium, bones zium material. I believe, if I'm not mistaken. You see, I'm just adding some, some textural scratches and scratches there. <clears throat> support metal. <laughs> what do you mean support metal? 
Metal minis don't get support. They're not going anywhere. They're not going anywhere, or poor poor Reaper John wouldn't have a job. So, if you if you want to see Reaper John lose his job, then definitely don't support metal. <laughs> no, I mean Reapers always said they're never gonna get rid of the metal minis. What's interesting too is a lot of people. It's it's so funny, right? Because the market is so big nowadays. There are people that don't even know that Reaper makes metal miniatures, right? Like. And that to me blew my mind whenever I like the first time I saw that kind of post where someone's like, I didn't know that they made metal. I bought this thinking it was plastic. I'm like, whoa, whoa. News to me. But yeah, metal is just superior in general, right? From a, I mean, so the Bones line, Bones Black line, it makes it so much easier, so much more affordable and easier for people to have large pieces. Um, you know, uh, and it's much easier to convert. Um, it's it's probably an e it's obviously easier to uh, mass manufacture, right? Because you don't have um, you're not reliant. Now, obviously, John he can move through pounds and pounds and pounds and pounds of metal a day, right? If he's if he's going full blast, like everybody that in the casting department can do that. But um, you know, there's a zero loss aspect to metal manufacturing and spin casting, which is cool. Um, and that obviously is good for business, but so are mass manufacturing, which of course eventually will make its way here, um, here as in the U.S., but down in Denton. That's kind of like part of part of the master plan of the uh, the move to the new space. And then they already have injection machines there, right? Like they make the bases in house, and uh, there are some other things that they can make in house that you guys. You guys don't know about, but they they they've got some machines there for sure. So, but it's just super expensive. That's all. I mean, when you when you think about the weight of all of the molds that exist right now to ship them over, like <laughs> that's gonna be a six figure six-figure expenditure easily easily and then what's interesting too right the way that they have all of the molds categorized and stored at reaper hq um currently right through like the library shelves it looks like i mean it's funny if you've ever if you've ever been there you know what i'm talking about um but they're gonna have to you know they're gonna have to come up with a way to do that effectively as well with all of now the bones and bones black molds so like that already is going to take a while to set up figure out it's kind of like i'm assuming the same planning would go into that the way because whenever they do the picking lines for the bones fulfillment on the kickstarters like they like redesign everything to make sense um so that'll be very very intriguing but yeah i mean metal's cool obviously it's not the best material out there right i don't think any material uh is overall better than anything right like I, I could probably speak at length at negatives to every single miniature material out there. Um, and obviously some people like the heft of metal minis, some people like the detail, but even that is arguable, right? Like Bones Black miniatures have plenty of detail. Um, just like Hips Plastic has great detail nowadays too. Resin obviously has the best detail, um, but depending on the resin material, you're dealing with something super flimsy and uh breakable or you're dealing with something super bendy and and too malleable um or you're dealing with some stuff that's like dental resin right that's like crazy heavy and chips like chunks of it come out if you're if you're cleaning it or you're dealing with resin that uh if you start filing away and sanding away and uh, you're not wearing like a breathing apparatus next thing you know uh you've got lung cancer and you're dead so Sometimes detail is a little bit deadly, right? But yeah. And then there are some people too, you know, everybody that has metal minis knows the, the one time you barely look at it, something breaks. Unless short of short of JB welding, right? Something. Um, you always risk breaking your mini. And so obviously that's why people love the Bones minis because you can be a DM and throw them in your backpack and uh, not worry about anything to go play some games, so. Or playing Warlord, right? Like, you can just grab a giant 
stack of bones minis, have your army ready to go, and then just throw them around everywhere because you know that one, they were inexpensive, and two, they're not going to break. So. All right. So, this color works great as a leather highlight, right? Because obviously it reads just kind of like a yellow ochre, but it looks good. looks like really worn um, leather. That's all I'm concerned about, right, is making sure we have all the details outlined and laid out. <clears throat> Let me make sure, too. I may have darkened that for a session. Let me know if that looks better. Lead. Yeah, let's, let's not go back to lead miniatures. Humans are dumb enough as it is. We don't need to give them another way to slowly shorten their lifespan. even though trace amounts in uh, white pewter, right, still exist depending on the manufacturer. I know Reaper moved away from that though, completely. Completely. Yeah, there's nothing worse than um, like the best miniatures of all time period and i would i would non-stop be able to argue down anybody really on a uh, objective basis when it comes to old rackham sculpts like and i don't mean i don't mean old as in like their first sculpts from like 98 96 or whatever because those were pretty goofy looking right but um, the real, real top tier stuff they were putting out that was coming out with the lead, like everybody knows the downfall of that was like miniatures literally snapping at uh, the ankle because they were so fine and so skinny that there was nothing you could do about it. And they would just break or like snapping at the, like things that were so small that they would break during the pinning process. So like, even if you're taking preventative measures, right, to try and protect what you're about to work on, you then are also in, in, in danger of breaking things. So like, you know, even at, even at its highest quality in terms of lead production with miniatures because of detail, like, cause you are arguably, they had the most detail produced miniatures period. And it was still a nightmare. Like depending on the faction you played, if you played the orcs or if you played uh, mid nor the evil dwarves, dwarves, whatever, the wolfen, like, all of those, you're pretty much good. But if you were playing with the elves, um, the humans, if you were playing the alchemists of Durs, any of those, like there were quite a few miniatures that it was just kind of like, hey, this is beautiful. It's going to look amazing when you paint it, but good luck, you know? Or if it was broken in the package. I remember one time um, I, bit, I bought something that I thought it was just like a bit rolling around in the package, but sure enough, um, it was a piece that was just broken and there was like no way in my limited capacity as a child at the time to know how to fix it. Man, it's so funny. Like I remember how much I used to enjoy miniatures more so like as a kid and the, the weirdest things on sculpts I would just be obsessed about and uh, <laughs> things that I would change on sculpts and like convert in just the worst way possible but just because I was having fun with it and yeah I, I really don't have a lot of um, my old sculpts I know Kevin from Hulk's workshop had asked me he was playing around with the idea of starting up a podcast much like you do when you enjoy the hobby a lot you've got stuff going on and um shout, shout out to uh, the paint cast <laughs> for people that listen to that god that honestly you know the hardest part about doing a podcast is just getting people scheduled like that's where all it all falls apart but um he wanted to see like the, some of my very first paint jobs compare them <clears throat> and like go through a timeline and i literally threw away like 
all of the first miniatures ever painted in, in a move. I was just like, I don't want them. I'm not going to hold on to them. Nobody would buy them, so I'm just going to throw them away. I have a couple really old paint jobs, but never... Uh, I don't, like, if I do have some, they're in something strange at, at my parents' house, right? Like, something that I didn't think to look in. But a bunch of old school orcs and things like that are now long gone. So, all right. Our leather is finally done. You can see we've got awesome contrast on it. Looks good. Looks crispy. Looks old. Looks like we're good. So, now then, I'm just going to straight up take ashen blue and we're going to use this to highlight up our little denim outfit he's got underneath and this is simple we're just going to do a one color highlight on it nothing nothing beyond that the thing about painting denim as a material that i found is that it's it's less about uh, multiple highlights because if you look at like raw denim as a material it's not very reflective um, but it is it has depth not shine if that makes sense it's very matte and so that's why I'm only going back with just the ashen blue on top rather than you know multiple colors like we did for the leather because that looks more so like denim now than anything else right it just looks like a shaded matte material and it gets you the effect that you're looking for um, cause I know I've seen some people before be like, how do you paint jeans or like, how do you do whatever? And they, they'll get replies, of course, from the painting masters on Facebook, uh, groups that are like, start with these nine colors. And it's like, oh dude, that is so much more work for minimal results. You know, unless you're, unless you're trying to do Jinko jeans with like designs on the back, then maybe. And then in these sections, I'm just going to outline it and add texture as I continue to highlight it up. Easy enough. Shoulder. Is, I don't know I guess it's a hook to hang the jumpsuit Canadian jumpsuit here top of the neck and shoulders all the way down And that's pretty much it for this. This was an easy once over. The front will add some color here in the interior portion towards the face. Light highlight, outline, like so. Ease peas. Inventory to all your legends. Why? Are you selling them? Are you a collector? Or are you just a list maker? All right, we're going to take Gnome Flesh. I'm going to go over here, new area on the palette. I guess I never think of the concept of like inventorying what you own just because... Anything I would I would want to know what I own would be a part of a game system, if that makes sense. Like, I don't know. I'm not really a hoarder when it comes to miniatures. I have very few. Very few. Yeah, it's like counting your gold, you know. Counting my gold, yeah, right. If, if only miniatures uh, gained in value over time. I guess some have, but that's with anything in life. 
some will be worth more than others. All right, so I'm going to be pushing this color up towards the nearest shadow, as we do on, on big muscles. Justin's back, so I guess he finally pooped. He's been constipated for days. Days, days, days. It's been a rough hour and a half. Yeah. He's pretty sure he has a hernia now, so it's not good. <clears throat> But I'm glad you could push through. So to speak. So to speak. So to speak. Yeah, Justin's been messing around with the studio today. That's what he was telling me. He's on real studio hours. Yeah, I don't want to jinx it, but I think the studio is uh, at least going to be finished and functional by the middle of next week i imagine at the latest nice so once again i, I hope we don't have to move out of it because <laughs> if i have to set all this stuff up like a like a third or fourth time i'm gonna lose my mind at that point you should just make it mo a mobile like literally put everything on tables on wheels and then you just wheel it out Even though, even though that sounds like a good idea, so I probably shouldn't say it, because then that'll be a request that's made. Uh, Justin, will you go put all this on wheels? I need you to redo all the wiring. Can you do infrared wiring instead? What We have wireless tu tube technology. For Reaper Virtual. I just want to know, for for the next ReaperCon, Reaper Virtual, whatever, right? If there's going to be a way that I can donate tokens to Collins for his dancing stream, because like I know that that's going to be a thing. It was so heavily requested that like we got to do it. I want to give him all of the tokens, or maybe maybe there'll be a date auction. I know they had to stay, stop the uh, date auction at ReaperCon Physical just because. People would fight over the dates between you and uh, Collins, but if it's virtual, nobody can get hurt, right? I mean, emotions and feelings can get hurt, but there shouldn't be any physical fights. Justin's mad. Sorry, I was, uh, I was typing. <laughs> uh, I'm fuming. All right, so we're just doing his uh, very, very trolly features here. So we highlight up. All right, we have this arm over here. Classic kissing booth situation. Yes. Yeah, man. I feel like pandemic, post-pandemic or not, next in-person ReaperCon, we definitely should have a kissing booth. For sure. It's a, it actually doubles as a dunking booth as well. And a cakewalk. I want the full county fair experience. Forget Brinewind, right? I want it to be county fair. I want it to be county fair studios, okay? When do you add the troll's neck? I almost... I, I almost had... So such a mean response to that not towards you i was gonna say something that was just so mean though but uh I, I mean we could green stuff it you know we could green stuff it what we should do is i'll, I'll green stuff a keyboard and uh, we'll have it we'll have him be in the middle of typing like a comment somewhere that says like uh you know, bone minis are not meant to be primed. And like other really hot takes. I heard you don't have to glue miniatures together. Metal minis are the worst. They're supposed to come painted. Things like that, you know. 
you're an elitist if you use miniature paints. You need to be using craft store paints only. There's so many comments that this cyber troll could be making, okay? Yeah, I showed, I showed some pretty good restraint there. Pretty, pretty good. All right, so now we're gonna grab some white. Brush tip of the white. Actually, we'll do two. Two brushes worth, there we go. Add a little bit more water, just a touch. So we continue on our highlighting journey. Oh my gosh. That was, a, that was a double buzz. Was that Patreon? What was that? Yeah. One of the 3D sculpting Patreons that I follow is literally like, what is it, today the ninth or nine days late on their release? But I get it. Like, with the amount, you know, I actually feel uh, bad for all of the people on Patreon that do the 3D sculpting because the expectation it now is that like you have to release 20 plus miniatures a month for 10 bucks right like or 15 like whatever it is you, you the expectation is you get a lot for a little right and most people know but some people don't know that <clears throat> a lot of those scenarios they have they have whole teams of people so like titan forge is a good example because titan forge makes after patreon gets their cut and PayPal gets their cut, they're pulling in at least $60,000 a month off of all their memberships, right? And that is a boatload of cash. But they also have a staff of like 12 people and multiple sculptors. So like if you're just some like new sculptor and you want to start a Patreon and you don't necessarily have a following already um, and you want to like just get people to support you, it's kind of hard because you have to do so, you, you know you're competing with that it's not like miniature painting where it's like well if people like your style and like the way you teach or whatever they'll support you instead it's like nah like there's an expectation that you have to release so much stuff so but this this creator's just one sculptor and one concept artist i just really like their style so i don't feel bad but i know they feel insane pressure all the time just because you're competing against like entire entire office is full of people but shout out to titan forge though they do cool i really like titan forge cyber forge dragon trapper's lodge cobra mode uh mini uh oh arch villain is good too um I'm trying to think who else i forget it's like mini monstrum something it's like mmm i forget uh I dropped my sub for them this month, unfortunately, just because I was not interested in the release. I was not interested. I don't think I'm missing anybody else, though. There are like, there are like five that I hop in and out of just because I like their uh, style of sculpting. What's weird, too, is whenever you see them, because they'll always have a theme, right? Like, very rarely do you just... Dragon Trapper's Lodge is, is as close as I would say in terms of, like, uh, putting out just random stuff. Like, they may have a loose theme, but you will, you'll you get stuff every month that's just sort of random. But for the most part, all these other large creators, they'll they'll theme themselves. Like, okay, we're, we're doing a water theme or a barbarian theme or whatever. And what's funny is when you see them sort of overlap and, like, obviously... Uh, Halloween is like the best excuse to have a theme and so like everybody was doing like either a twisted circus Halloween theme or like vampires and werewolves like I have so many 3d print files for vampires and werewolves now that I could like recreate the entire uh underworld series in my underwear right at, at the kitchen table like I could just pretend to be uh whatever her name is <laughs> who was the the chick from other world i forget uh who it was but wasn't it that beckham something beckham what kate beckinson why sydney is yelling at me through the door 
Okay, first of all, that's creepy. All right, my door is shut for a reason, Sydney. And why is your door not shut? Oh, because she's in the... Oh, so we're taking a break? Oh, her back hurts, everyone, so she's taking a break. Well, I w well my back hurts, too, so I can't complain. I can't complain. I know it's true. She's been designing all day. Designing all day. All right, so now then. Okay, so we've got some highlighted skin. Prep, prep. And we've got a big gun and uh, some horns. So let's do on the horns. Let's grab. I'm going to grab some orange here. Now then, if you got orange brown in the mail, not a big deal. That'll work for you too. Okay. So I'm just going to grab grab some orange. I'm going to put a little bit more of uh, intense brown and some more and more black. And we're just going to kind of mix that to make a little wash for the horns. And then we're going to use noir black for our hair and uh, highlight up the gun as it. Bam, bam. So I'm going to move over here on the palette. <coughs> New palette for you. So let me get some of the orange, some of the intense brown, a little bit of the noir black. There you go. Look how gross that is. It actually looks like green. A very weird sort of olive -y ochre. It's always interesting to me. Like that, that means there's some blue pigment somewhere inside noir black. They should... You know what an interesting concept would be is you get like Sadie or you get Anne, depending on the knowledge base required, right? If it's newer paint, I would expect Sadie to know. If it was like old, obscure stuff, then probably Anne would remember it because she's just been around it longer. But so what you do is like you have some painters mix down uh, paints in different ways and, and mix them with other paints in different ways. And then they try and guess, right, the, the different pigment tones that exist in the pre-mixed color, right? So, like, based on how this sort of turned a greenish tint uh, with the orange when I mix in noir black, right, I'm able to, like, break down and analyze, okay, well, there's probably some blue somewhere because how else would it change that color? I feel like that would be a very interesting uh, thing that you guys could do. So, now Anne, I know, is all painting painting through her uh toolbox videos but maybe that could be something fun for sadie to do right because the uh people in the audience could do it and make guesses while she's mixing them different ways and see if you can guess the pigments that could be pretty cool forensic analysis of, of paint pigments actually knowing how she likes true crime stuff that seems like it'd be right up her alley but I'm going to mix in a little bit of the ashen blue to our noir black just to make it not as intense there. That that would be a uh, sharky. I feel like that'd be a fun event as well um, for in-person ReaperCon. Like get a bunch of the MSP judges and painters and things like that and have them do it live. It's like a, a, a weird panel event. So there's his like really bad uh <laughs> you just like the taste yeah exactly so there's this really bad weird haircut so what we're gonna do is we're actually going to go in and do more of an implied haircut here so i'm gonna bring it down around the edges of the horns there like so and we're gonna flesh it out a little bit more Because, yeah, that kind of Tweedledum haircut situation was bothersome to me the first time around. He's like, hey, my mom's a good barber, all right? Then on the back, because we expanded it, we can just then fill in all of his space.
Oh, you know what could be fun, too? Well, there's no way you could do that, actually. <clears throat> All I'm going to say is when I was in sixth grade, in good old, good old Allen, Texas, USA, okay, we went on a field trip to the Dr. Pepper Museum in Waco, Texas, okay? And as a part of that tour, you got to make your own soda, and you got to go into the soda lab and use all the stuff that Dr. Pepper is made out of to make your own soda, and you got glass bottles, and you got to take it home. Now then, I'm not saying that that should be a permanent fixture in the Reaper, Reaper uh, factory tour, because obviously that is crazy, but that could be... If it was, now, I don't think it's possible, so I don't, you know, this shouldn't be anything people are, like, demanding. I'm using this color to outline some of these parts, too, in the outfit. Um, but that could be, that, that's, like, a cool concept, right? Like, if they had a mini Audrey machine, and you could just, like, mix a custom color, but that, I know, is not feasible. But if you guys want to compete with the Dr. Pepper Museum, get on it. I know you are. I know the biggest fear for Reaper as a company, okay, is the Dr. Pepper Museum experience, but. Terrified. <laughs> I just like that random noise in the background. <laughs> Justin cuts in, you hear like a full mariachi band. He's like, I'm totally at work right now. Oh, do you hear that? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's a, uh, I think that's a grinding machine for the, Sinocast stuff because David's moving some stuff over so because we all are going to occupy the same space but the door is open so and there's a lot of soundproofing that still hasn't been done so you're not done yet <laughs> <laughs> that's the one what Justin was going to say is that's the one question he wanted to hear so that's I'll go ahead and take that answer off your hands All right. Too busy talking with chat. Yeah, this troll went to the barber and he said, "Give me the fam special, the the mess me up fam special." All right, so now I've got a little highlight color here for the horns. Dude, I have made a mess on this palette today, but that's okay. It's all right. We're surviving. Yeah, I'm just going to do some implied banding here. There are obviously some sculpted uh, little ridges, um, but they're a little bit hard to see. They're a little bit spongy. So I'm just going to kind of do implied ones following the sculpted ridges. You can easily do it at home on camera. I would have to zoom in to really make it make sense. But you can see already I'm just piecing it out. And, I mean, I would say painter's choice on the horns for what, uh, whatever you want them to be. But like a good Linkin Park quote, in the end, it doesn't even matter, okay? Okay, Ju Ju Justin's favorite band is Linkin Park. I don't know if you guys know this. But any time I came into the, the studio, before it was known as Brindwind Studios, okay? This was back before it was cool and a thing. He would be blasting Evanescence and Linkin Park. Those were the two things, if you were walking in that room, you were guaranteed to hear. So sometimes it was even better because you would hear crying coming from uh, Collins's office down the hall, and you'd be like, come on. That's the second time you've heard that Linkin Park quote today? Well, I'm concerned, firstly. You know, I actually really did love Hybrid Theory as a kid. Yeah, me too. Well, we're uh, we're about the same age, so about the same time point. We'd both be hearing that. Yeah, that was my entire phase of listening to that, and then like Ramstein, and like uh, oh wow, Sydney's laughing from the other room, and then uh, Cake. 
I had a cake phase where I listened to. Oh man, I love cake. That's what I'm saying, man. Because I'm, you know, I like to go the distance. Okay. We're building a religion here at Reaper. Oh boy. <laughs> but oh man, and then about that same time, who else? Okay, so who else was like? Because that's like a whole direction that music went in. So then, who else? You had the Killers. The Killers came out at about the same time. Um, I still like the Killers. You know what? I'll be honest. Any of the bands we've named, I'd still listen to them today. You'd be like, that's something that I enjoy. Um, yeah, I mean, I haven't heard Cake in a hot minute, but I'll listen to Cake. Right? What's funny is I remember listening to Cake for the first time um, because my friend was like, all right, guys, this is crazy. I have this thing, and it's called a music streaming service. And everybody's like, what? Actually, that was the first time I played D&D. So it was my buddy Tyler, who I'm still friends with today. It was his birthday. And it was like, yo, and, and you know, I don't even know how old we were, but it was like just all of our friends staying up all night, right? Playing Magic. We played D&D. &D. Uh, so I say this in air quotes because there were like 15 people hanging out. So it was more like we all just sort of pretended we're playing. And then um, so it was this huge birthday party, like sleepover, lock in, stay up all night, play video games, deal. And he was like, oh, yeah, my parents got this music streaming service. And we're like, what does that mean? And he's like any music on the planet we pay 15 bucks a month and we can listen to it and it was rhapsody i don't know if you remember rhapsody uh the rhapsody music streaming service but that's what he had oh i do aren't <laughs> they the ones that got aren't they the ones that got sued uh i don't remember uh i don't know um if they got or was that napster no that's no 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 that's napster because this this was like the first legal service and so that's why it was like such a big deal and I remember he was like, yeah, you can listen to anything. He's like, listen to this. And he starts playing cake and like nothing but cake songs. <laughs> and so I just, very, I have a very distinct memory of hearing a uh, short skirt and a long jacket over. Just, da, 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 just nonstop. A long, long jacket. Yep. And then I sub subsequently remember going home and like trying to explain, uh, what that service was to my parents and i'm like we gotta get it you can listen to any music and my mom's like i don't listen to music and my dad's like i only listen to the eagles and uh credence so i'm like okay well <laughs> never mind guys yeah do you have any family members that, like just don't listen to music my mom, for real, just, like, doesn't listen to music. She likes classical music. I, both my parents don't really, like, go out of their way to listen to music at all. Yeah. Because I'm somebody, like, in the car, I always have music, right? Like, that's... I don't know. I don't know if that's a generational thing, either. I wouldn't think it is. I, I don't, I'm not sure. It's definitely easier for us to listen to music, but in, in that same vein, right? Like, it's easier for everyone to listen to any kind of music that you enjoy. So, I don't know. Shout out to my mama. Sydney only listens to soundtracks of um, kids' shows. So that's, you know. So I definitely have to have control of the the iPod. There's only so many times I can listen to the mail song from Blues Clues and like the What what about the the like the soothing whales from like the Pacific Northwest? Oh no no no. So she doesn't listen to whale sounds. She does play a couple like animal soundtracks, but usually it's the sounds of her people. So it's like raccoons and um like so it'll be like raccoons or um, possums, a lot of possum chittering, uh, rat. Like, <laughs> just, just a 10 hour loop of possum chittering. Yeah, just 10 hours of possums, um, uh, the depressed screams of rats at in cages at Petco, like very weird decisions. Um, so I'm usually the one, you know, making music you know, decisions, so... On road trips, you like no music or the same CD for 10 hours. Well, uh, Michael, I am not surprised by that answer. That definitely seems very on brand for you. Um, or, you know, honestly, I figured you'd be the kind of guy that like has way too much knowledge about big band uh, music, like actual orchestral band, right? And you're just listening to like marches. 
I don't know. You, you give me that kind of vibe sometimes, but it's only because you like things a certain way and you like structure. And I feel like you would like structured music, like marches. I don't know. But I think that's pretty much it today uh, for painting our cyber troll. I hope you all have had fun. drumline. There you go. Only drumline music <laughs> over and over. Yeah. The same one. The soundtrack from the movie drumline. Hey, I could probably get down with that. But what, but what he was well, see. What he's describing is the same piece played by different high schools in one compilation. And he's judging, oh, yeah, he's judging the inconsistencies between the drum lines. I think that's what he's, he's trying that's to tell. That's rough. Us. That is really rough. All right, so that's it for today. Uh, I appreciate everybody hanging out with us. Now, next time, we're going to be painting up the IMF Bulldog. So uh, you can... <laughs> You can assemble them any way you'd like. Uh, I am doing both gun options. I mean, you guys have seen the image. Uh, so we're just going to copy the same image that we have done before. You can obviously assemble yours differently if you have different plans. He comes with a cool power sword, a power fist, uh, two different actual like guy humanoid heads popping out, um, steering it. We're doing the enclosed uh, helmet. So it's really up to you. Um, but yeah, do you have any, uh, awesome housekeeping announcements for us, Justin? No, there's nothing right now. Nothing coming up. Just, uh, stay in the course with the, uh, with the studio. Hopefully we'll have our in-person episode here in about a week. Okay. So, well, well, all right. I appreciate all of you. I hope you find $20 in your pocket. I hope your bully from elementary school stubs their toe on the way to the shower or they chip a tooth that everyone will notice. And uh, beyond that, may all your palates stay wet. Thanks, Sharky. Thanks, everybody else that is hanging out. And uh, we'll be here bright and early uh, 3 p.m. Monday next week. And remember to hang out and watch all the streams. Uh, tomorrow is... Um, is tomorrow Luca's show? Did that start last week? Yeah, it started last week, but it is on Wednesdays. Oh, tomorrow's... T I don't even know what day it is. So, Wednesdays, there you go. I, know, I just knew that he had started. He Was was he painting the thing that he was working on from ReaperCon, if I'm not mistaken? Or, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, the comic style. He, I believe he finished that, though, and he started the, the Friar, the... The Friar Tuck, I think is who it is, or something like that. Oh, man. Yeah. Cool, cool. Well, definitely make sure you check that out. Do we have, And we have Clever Crow again this weekend. I saw... Look, we have... Or this week, Ed's sorry. going to be the guest, yeah. Oh, wait, who is? Ed. Oh, there you go. And then is, is Jason, like, permanently a guest, too, or, like, co-host? He is. He's going to be a, a co-host since... Um, they're, they're, they have great rapport between the two of them. And I think their conversation is usually pretty good. And it also gives us the opportunity in the future when I get Jason set up, um, to do, uh, some close sculpting on screen too. Kind of like flip it up, you know? Awesome. So, um, I have a raid for us. We're actually going to be raiding. Uh, so this is someone that John and I know in real life. She, she actually, I, I sent her a uh, uh, learn to paint kit and some, some other little goodies basically from Reaper because she's never painted, but she wanted to give it a shot. And she literally just started streaming like two weeks ago or something. Her name is, uh, her name is Amber, but she, she goes by Lulu, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and raid her. And she is actually painting a Reaper mini right now. Wow. Wow. So we'll see if now she doesn't have a mini cam yet, but mind you, this is her first ever miniature and any amount of feedback guys, I'm sure she would greatly appreciate it. And uh, she has a, a follower goal, too. I'm sure you guys can smash that. So. Oh, yeah. Okay, we got that. No problem. Thank you guys very much. All right, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. Have a great rest of y'all's day. Please make me stop. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, no,